All right, hey everybody. How's it going? Hopefully we are we are live here. Welcome, I'm Todd Knock. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, doing an art live stream here. So my OBS live streaming app has been acting buggy. So uh, I could not pre-schedule this. So we're kind of kind of flying a little bit by the seat of the seat of the pants. So I appreciate y'all um, being patient with me. And uh, so I'm trying to make sure I can see. Ah, there we go. There it is. There it is. So we're going to send this over to the um, over to the, the Instagram as well. So let's invite the Instagram people to join. So there we go. Hey, everybody. Welcome on Instagram. So I'm doing an art live stream here. So this is an illustration of, of Iron Man that I did the digital pencils of last week. Today we're doing the ink. So what I did was I printed out, the, I converted all the, the line art, the, pen, the digital pencil line art. I don't know why I did air quotes for that. Digital pencil line art. Um, converted it all to non-repro blue in Photoshop. Printed this out on 9 inch by 12 inch, 140 pound cold press Canson brand watercolor paper. If you're watching this on, on YouTube, I will have all this info in the video description below. If you're watching this on Instagram or, or later on my IGTV, I'll have that info available somehow as well um, if I can. But at the very least, it's easy to add to the uh, YouTube live stream. So let's get to inking. I'm going to be using my, um, uh, how do you say, Pigma Micron multi-liners. Let's, let's uh, focus in on there and on Instagram. There we go. Um, so going to be using my multi-liners. Got the 08 and the 01. So let's get right into inking. Enough of this intro. Let's get right into inking. So um, yeah, I'm going to start with the foreground and uh, I'll try to answer some questions as I go here on on the on the YouTubes and on the Instagrams. I'll try to do this as best as possible. Um, though a lot of my focus is on the art, so I can't promise I can respond to everyone's comment or question. But I do appreciate y'all uh, participating and being here to hang out with me while I draw. Or in this case, ink. And so I'm trying not to move the artboard out of camera frame. So I'm trying to adjust myself more than how I would adjust the artboard comfortably if I were doing this, you know, if I was not live streaming, just, just working at my table at my leisure. So welcome YouTube people. So sorry I couldn't schedule this ahead of time. Um, I'm sorry that my light is covering up part of my face while I, I draw here on the uh, YouTube feed. Doing the simulcast here, this kind of uh, fly-by fly by night simulcast here is a work in progress. This is the second time I've simulcast from my YouTube and my Instagram. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of kinks to work out. A lot of how, how do I, how do I um, set up all the lighting, cameras, microphones, artwork, so that y'all can see as much as possible. Hmm. Just noticed here I scraped up my knuckle. I don't know, uh, probably with moving everything around, as you can see there on Instagram, that left index finger knuckle got, got scraped. Just hazards of the business, y'all. Any plans for a Pattison Batman drawing? Uh, no plans at this moment, but you never know what the future holds. I don't think I've drawn any of the other Batman actors. I haven't done a Keaton or a Clooney or a Kilmer. Just realized the first three Batman since 1989 all have a K sound in their last name. Keaton, Clooney, Kilmer. And then, uh, then there's Christian Bale, so that goes to the first name for the K sound, so we'll allow that. Christian Bale, Ben Affleck, his N's in the K, K sound, so that's, that's a, that's a gimme. And then, um, and now we've got Robert Pattison, so, um, oh, thank you. 
just given a band-aid by my off-screen help here. Actually, you know, the scrape isn't that bad. Thank you anyway, but it's just a, a very minor scrape. The band-aid's not going to fit. It's, it's going to slow things down. So, but thank you. Thank you anyway. So we're just going to like to start with the foreground so I can, um, for line weights, because things in the foreground are going to have a, a uh, thicker line weight, oftentimes, oftentimes thicker line weight than the stuff as we move further towards the background. So since his hands push so far forward, those thicker lines will make it look like it's more in our face. And then as the lines get thinner, it creates this sense of distance. When did I start inking my drawings? Uh, I, uh, I've i always inked my drawings to one degree or another since I've been drawing, essentially. But professionally, I worked with an inker when I broke in. I broke in on, on just solely my penciling skills. And I worked with inkers in the past. The longest time, uh, spending most of the time working with a guy named Larry Stucker. He inked my work on... Uh, well, we, we first got paired up at Extreme Studios, where we both got our start working for Rob Liefeld. So he inked my uh, Bad Rock and Company and New Men runs for Rob Liefeld. Um, and then we both got repaired, interestingly enough, when we both ended up at DC Comics years later. And we got paired up again on some Legion of Superheroes. And it was great to be re-teamed up with Larry. And, to, and so I asked for him to ink my work on Young Justice. So we did that, we did Teen Titans Go, the original Teen Titans Go, not the current Teen Titans Go. The original Teen Titans Go comic was the adventure com cartoon uh, comic book translation. So I drew the adventure, the original Teen Titans cartoon, but we had the name Teen Titans Go first as the, the, the name of the comic book based on the original cartoon. So he did that series with me, and then he helped me with my Wild Guard series, my creator-owned series. He did the first five issues, and... Um, and then he retired from comics, worked with a few other inkers that were fantastic. Um, and then uh, in 2010, I thought it'd be fun to try inking, using my current inking skills at that time to do a, uh, try inks on a, on a short story, a Spider-Man short story. And my editor said, yeah, let's give it a go. And I had so much fun. I was now ready to move into full-time inks over my pencils. And um, so I started that in 2010 on a Spider-Man short story. Um, forget which what the name of that sto short story was or where it appeared, um, but that's that's when I start started doing full time, inking my my work full time, like doing my own inks over my pencils, and um, and I've loved it ever since. So I've been inking professionally in a full time capacity over my my pencils for ten years now. Long story there, but we had the time to tell it. So uh, so professionally, I would say. 10 years that I've been doing it consistently. I'd already inked some stuff, like I was already inking my covers prior to 2010, um, or some of my covers, or special projects I was doing for Marvel. So that kind of set me up to start inking interiors, which was a big learning curve because it's it's difficult to ink interiors. There's a lot of stuff to ink when you're uh, inking interiors. So I had to, um, I had a lot to learn and I had a lot to learn how to manage my time to get to a point where I could get the work done and done well in a timely fashion. And my time working with Robert Kirkman doing the Invincible Universe and Guarding the Globe series, which were spinoffs of the Invincible comic book, which is coming to, I think they're making a cartoon of that for uh, Amazon Prime, which I look forward to seeing. Uh, I used to love reading the Invincible comics. Uh, it was definitely a must read for me. It was a really fun series to read. Very excited for the show. And I, I really enjoyed getting to be a part of that universe, uh, spending two years working on those Robert Kirkman superhero comics. Um, so, uh, so doing that, working on that series for two years helped me develop the skills I needed to ink a full comic book on a monthly basis. Unfortunately, we had a lot of lead time. So it took me about six weeks to pencil and ink a comic, which is... A very generous deadline. Usually we get about four weeks to draw a comic, so 
but working on that series for that amount of time uh, with a really nice lead time helped me shave getting a book done in six weeks down to getting it done in four weeks and not feeling I was sacrificing uh, quality or enjoyment of, of working on the project. So it was a great, it was a great opportunity to develop those, those skills and stamina to um, get a full regular series, monthly comic book series penciled and inked every month over the course of those two years. So that when I went back to Marvel and started doing uh, the Nightcrawler series, which was my first gig at Marvel as uh, after doing uh, that, those two years with Robert Kirkman, um, really pre uh, prepared me so that I could, uh, you know, pencil and ink a, a Nightcrawler series. And then everything since then. So again, I made that long story even longer. Let's see if there's another question here on the on the YouTubes. Lots of questions or lots of comments here. Let's see, here's a great question. Uh, when sketching, do you already have a general idea of what to put on the paper or go with the flow at times? Uh, yes, it's kind of both. I kind of shared this before and I'm happy to share it again. Oftentimes what I see in my mind's eye, in my imagination, is not a crystal clear picture. It is, I guess in all senses of the word, just a, an idea. It's, it's an idea, it's somewhat formed out. It's like, I, I liken it to seeing like through a fog, like I see a ghost image of it, or like uh, seeing it through a, um, let me pull the mic here a little closer, um, seeing it through uh, like a frosted glass, you know, like frosted glass, um, a little bit like that is the best way I can describe it. And even still, that's not the most perfect way to describe it. So um, I, I, uh, I have a general idea of what it is I want to do, and it allows me the, uh, the freedom that once I start trying to replicate what I see in my head by putting the lines down on the paper, the lines, the shapes, the form, the volume, the mass, and everything like that, once I start working on it, it allows me the freedom to edit and make different choices as I go. To think kind of, kind of brainstorm with myself how I um, can best make this picture come together. And so sometimes what I see in my head might need to be changed based on what I'm seeing come to life on the paper. So a pose I have in my head might, might morph a bit because now I'm seeing the actuality of it. So I, at, at that point, I'm now starting to go with the flow as you put it. And um, and then just kind of see what I discover as I go along, um, and uh, make things happen. So it, so to answer your question, yeah, it's kind of both. It, it, it varies. Sometimes I I have a, a more clear picture in my head, and and I I make that come to life. There's still going to be room for uh, on the fly editing, uh, making changes as I go. But so sometimes the the picture is very clear in my head, or clearer than usual. Most of the times, I feel it's more of kind of a, a sense. It's a ghost image. It's a frosted image or looking through a fog. And then I kind of allow it to, to morph and change uh, as needed as, as I work, as I draw. Allowing myself that freedom to make changes um, has been uh, valuable to me been a, a valuable uh, aspect. So if we worked from that hand to the forearm to the upper arm, now here to his big old hinged shoulder pad thingy. Now I'm drawing the 1985 Silver Centurion armor, also known as the Mark VI armor in the Marvel Comics universe. So when I started reading comics as a kid back in the 1980s, uh, he was he was wearing his actually James Rhodey Rhodes was wearing the he was the current Iron Man at the time uh, Tony Stark was going through a bit of a rough time at that time so uh, James Rhodey Rhodes was Iron Man at that time and uh, he was wearing the Mark V which is that classic 1970s 1980s armor uh, that red and gold one. And uh, which most of his armors are red and gold, but it was the <laughs> red and gold before this red and silver showed up. And then I remember when he 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 in '85 when he he 
when Tony Stark came back to be Iron Man, he had this brand new armor, and I just thought it was so cool looking. I loved the shape of the helmet. I loved the shoulder pads. I loved the big chunky clunkiness of the armor. Um, I like that it was silver, silver and uh, red. I like this. I really enjoyed the silver and red of it all. So um, I thought it was a it was a fun change up to 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 ditch the gold for the red. And uh, still love the red and gold, but I thought red and silver was just something so new to my, gosh, at that time, 14-year-old brain, 14-year-old eyes, that is just like, I, I just thought it was the, such a cool, unexpected change. Because I'd only ever known the Mark V armor. Because he wore that one for a long time. You want to get some Spidey comics? What series did I draw? Uh, I worked on a lot of different Spidey comics. Uh, almost every Spider-Man title. Almost. Not all of them, but most of them. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man, Spectacular, Peter Parker. Um, many different ones. Uh, so which ones did I draw? If you want like a full story, I'd say check out Spidey Schools Out. It's in trade paperback. It's called Spidey, not Spider-Man. Spidey Schools Out. It's from the alternate reality where Spider-Man is a teenager. Uh, it's not the regular 616 Marvel Universe. It's a, it's a sub-universe, if you will. Um, so I did a, that Spidey miniseries a couple years ago. Um, I did um, the second half of the first Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man series back in 2006 and, and 2007. I did the Back in Black storyline uh, in Spider-Man. Uh, Spider I'm sorry, Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man. Um, sorry about that, Instagram people. A uh, phone call tried to come in there. So, uh, yeah, those would be some of the ones that I would say that I did the full story of. Of the two most recent um, Amazing Spider-Man series, uh, 2000, the 2019 and 2017, issue 25 of both those issues, of both those uh, volumes of Amazing Spider-Man, the 2017, Amazing Spider-Man issue 25, 2017, and Amazing Spider-Man issue 25 from the 2019 volume, I did uh, backup stories in both of those. One written by Christo Gage, who I had later... Uh, do the Gwen Stacy series with, which only the first two issues have come out. We're hoping the rest of the series comes out here. The series has been delayed due to the COVID-19 slowdown of uh, shipping and production, but hopefully that will uh, those will come out soon. And um, and then uh, and then in 2019, I did the uh, did a story with my 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 good buddy uh writer zeb wells he he and i did a short story for the most recent amazing spider-man 25 that came out in 2019 so you can check out both of those as well so i've switched to the zero one micron i want to add some more detail to the hands a little finer detail if you will here at the segments kind of the banded metal segments of the digits of his fingers here Want a thinner detail line there so things don't get too too clunky, too chunky. And where's my ellipse template? I want to use my ellipse template, these, these different sized ovals, to get a nice clean oval here for his repulsor ray uh, port, if you will. So I just picked an oval and then I want to Create a little bit of a lip inside of here, so I'm just going to adjust that a little bit. Secondary lip in there. There we go. So, 
Uh, yeah, so I'm going to switch back to the 0, 8. Start putting in the uh, metal shine here, if you will. Now I am going to take this to watercolor in a future live stream, maybe next week. my best to try to stream once a week if I can. So I did the pencils last week, the digital pencils last week. If you missed the digital pencils, they are both here on my YouTube and my IGTV. So, uh, so if you're watching on YouTube, you can check out episode 98 of my live streams. If you are watching on Instagram, just swing over to my IGTV account and you can watch the pencils of this image come to life if you missed it. So hopefully next week I can do the watercolors. I haven't done watercolor videos in a while now, but I've been doing more watercolor here recently for some commissions and I've been having a lot of fun with it. I can't wait to show them to y'all on my Instagram and Twitter. So if you're not following me on Instagram or Twitter, YouTube friends, uh, make sure that you uh, look me up. I'm at Todd Knock on those two uh, platforms. So if you're on those, go go seek me out. Usually I have the links to all my social media in the video description below. Uh, those will need to be edited into my uh, into this video here after the live stream. I'll, I'll make sure I get those links put in for easy access. So then you can see the art that I, I try to post as regularly as possible. Been kind of busy with uh, other projects here of late, so I haven't even been posting on my Instagram or Twitter as much as I usually do. There was a time where I had a, a new illustration or two to post uh, each day, and now it's like I'm lucky to have time to uh, post something um, every other day or every few days. but. Like I said, I got some really, I've been working on some really fun projects. Nothing I can talk about just yet, but uh, once, once they have been announced, I will be sharing that information uh, on my social media. So stay tuned for that. Let's move this down to the pectoral muscle here. So I'll be filling this part in black a little bit later on. So I just put a little X there to remind myself. Fill this in black with the brush later. It's too big of a spot to fill in with my micron. It would just use up too much ink. It's unnecessary. Um, so let's uh, move over here to the this portion of Iron Man. Let's work on that head a little bit. Still using the 08 micron. Instagram peeps, if you have any questions, feel free to fire away there. Maybe I'll try to, difficult for me to uh, see them all as, as, I, uh, as I post, but uh, do know I have not forgotten about you. Um, I like to take a peek every now and again, but the way the camera rig is holding my camera or my phone, for the Instagram feed, it's a little difficult to see all the questions. But I do see the hearts. I appreciate that. Thanks for being here. Thanks for hanging with me. Well, actually, there's a question, the little question icon thing there. Oops. Not that. This. How long did it take you to draw r armor robotic type of suits? Um, I don't know. I don't know if I can actually say there was like 
a length of time it took me to learn how to draw. It was, it's all been a process. Anything I've drawn or learned to draw has been a process. And the things I have learned to draw, I continue to try to learn how to draw better. Um, so, uh, so I can't say it like there was like, I didn't, I didn't take a class on how to learn how to draw armor or robot type stuff. It's just an interest I had for sure, for sure. Uh, an interest I had, so I just drew those types of things, uh, you know, whenever I felt the interest or inclination or opportunity to, to do so. Um, so it's definitely been, uh, as with anything, something I've learned over time. It's definitely been a, a process, as it is with learning anything. How do I keep proportions correct? It's kind of another question here from Instagram. Uh, very similarly, just uh, studying life drawing, um, studying real life as much as possible, studying the shapes, studying foreshortening, and it's constant study. It's lifelong study, in my opinion. Always something new to learn, to develop, to adapt, to 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 grow in, in some some sort of way. So, uh, so that's how, how, how I do that is, uh, just by, um, study and practice, constant study and practice. And if you're looking for a life, life, uh, a, a life drawing type of book, the three most, so three of the most popular ones since I was an art student, uh, Bern Hogarth, which is the one my, my life drawing instructor taught from Bern Hogarth, B-U-R-N-E, Hogarth, like the kid from the movie Iron Giant. Bern Hogarth, uh, Dynamic Anatomy. And there's Andrew Loomis, L-O-O-M-I-S, and uh, George Bridgman. So you can you can look up those those guys' books if you want some really good uh, life drawing technique, instructional books. So I switched here back to the zero one. for the finer lines of his, uh, the inner parts of his, his helmet. See, so, yeah, check out here on the YouTube, any questions here? We took a couple from Instagram, let's look into YouTube. Let's see, any tips on getting group shots right? Spacing uh, each character out, escape, spacing each character out, poses, sizes, etc. Oh my gosh, I love drawing group shots. Absolutely love it. Um, there is, I mean, it all depends on the shot that one wants to do. Hopefully you've had a chance to see my multi-part X-Men group shot, my 90s X-Men era uh, group group shot i did here on on the youtube's uh youtube live streams i think it was like a almost 20 part series because i drew probably 20 characters in that group shot on an x-men sketch cover um so I, I share a lot of my my uh modes of thinking in in that in that live stream um there are definitely things that i think about Uh, things that I consider as far as figure placement, where do I put them? Uh, who goes in the foreground? Who moves in further to the background? Um, I consider so many different things. I mean, it's just every illustration can be different. So the thinking would be different. Um, so uh, it all just depends on who I'm drawing and what is the story I'm trying to tell. Even if it's just, you know, the characters are standing around or in an action pose, there's still a story. There can still be a story there um, in that one image and, and as to the choices that I'm making. So, uh, so yeah, I do have a lot of thoughts and opinions or, or, or tips, I should say, but it varies depending on the group shot. So I would suggest check out my X-Men group shot live stream um, here on YouTube. Uh, it's got its own playlist, I believe, if I remember correctly. Or you can find it in the live stream playlist. Just scroll down to episode four, I think it is. I think it's the first episode there where I do a lot of the roughing out of the group. 
I hopefully I share some uh, good tips on that. I, I did that about three plus years ago, maybe four years ago. So, um, so it's been quite a while, but uh, it's hard for me to remember everything I said there. Hopefully I can do another group shot, another group shot here as, as a live stream. And um, I can share those tips and tricks as, as I go. It's a little easier for me to share as I, as I go because uh, I'm a visual learner. So I'm kind of more, I kind of share my tips and tricks better when I'm working in that visual sense. But yeah, I definitely need to do another group shot video. Would y'all wanna see a group shot video here, YouTube watchers or Instagram people? Let's see, over here on Instagram, did I ever try out a crow quill or an S7 uh, brush Windsor Newton for inking? Uh, I have tried crow quill, yes. Uh, the only brush type of inking I've done is with uh, brush pens, like the uh, Pentel Pocket Brush Pen or the Zebra Brush Pen type marker. But as far as using like a Windsor and Newton uh, brush, no, I have not done that yet. Uh, crow quill, I have done that. Um, I've experimented with that. I like it. Um, I just haven't had time to really work at it or study or, or practice that as much as I would like. So uh, hopefully I'll get a chance to do more of that soon. And maybe I'll do a video of working with uh, the Crow Quill dip pen sometime in the future. Just focusing here on the neck area. He's got a little bit of that segmented neck here just underneath his chunkier helmet. Got a lot here to fill in black, or not a lot, but we have portions here. I should say there's these portions. A lot was a bit of a hyperbole. Uh, portions of his helmet here that will be filled in black, like all through here and under his chin, little teeny tiny X's to remind myself, fill this in black a little bit later. Are there any books I can recommend to learn to draw with watercolor? Uh, no, I do not know of any books. I, I, I'd imagine they are out there. I just have not used uh, any watercolor art, how to draw kind of instructional art book. Um, I, have, I have watched some watercolor YouTube videos, like for learning how to do uh, backgrounds and stuff, um, and just learning other tips and tricks. Uh, so, uh, so there, there are some great YouTube watercolor videos. I would suggest uh, checking out some of those and maybe they might be able to recommend a book. But, um, but uh, unfortunately, I don't, I don't know of any specific book, unfortunately. I have not used any book. Uh, did a lot of watercolor in art school and, uh, and then didn't do a lot of watercolor for a long time and then started up with watercolor again about 10 years ago, off and on. And it's mostly been off here of late until a little more recently. Um, gonna go ahead and fill in this, uh, this black here with a micron because it's a smaller area and it's easier to do with my 0.8 micron. But I'll fill in the rest of this upper port of the upper port upper upper part part of his helmet a little later on all right let's 
Let's try putting on that face. Back to the zero, one micron now. Sure, we're still on screen and everything. Yep, yep, cool. Just checking out the Instagram here. And on Instagram, you can send a question. Okay, just making sure there weren't, just seeing if I can catch any new questions, I should say. Oh yeah, we're working on this face. Working on the face. Get a little forehead and brow. I guess the eye slats done. And now let's see his mouth. Where's my French curve? I want a nice kind of clean line to the mouth. So I'm gonna adjust the paper here. I'm using a, lining up the curve of my French curve to hit the just right angle of the curve of his mouth. A little piece of dust on there. I want to make sure that wasn't an ink fleck or a stray ink line. All right, where's my double zero? Let's see, make sure we're back on screen there. Make sure we're still in focus on the Instagram. A little bit of the kind of the bend of the of the uh, faceplate that allows for the nose. Now let's move on to the collar here. Using the zero one again here for the thinner detail lines so that things don't muddy up. Can I do a hand drawing tutorial as in how to draw hands? Um, yeah, I'll have to look into that. I'll have to see what I can do in that regard. Let's see, I'm gonna flip this back around. I wanna start to drop in some of the lines here on his chest piece. I want a nice, clean, kind of curved line. So using that uh, French curve again. So drafting tools, very important. Uh, our uh, tool in my arsenal here. Let's go ahead and hit the bottom of his chest piece. In fact, I'm just going to go ahead and ink the entire chest piece in. So, French Cools curves along with your uh, um, what are they called? The uh, T-square, the triangle, the circle template, and ellipse template. All important drafting tools when drawing comics. Let's 
flip it around this way. So it can create a nice, nice kind of I want it bow a little bit around his chest. It's a very organic sort of, uh, less for kind of that tech look, but an organic sort of uh, vibe. Because his body, his armor, wraps around him in a very organic shape. So it's not just hard, straight lines. Um, so I want to try to keep that in mind when illustrating his armor here. And uh, how would the, this tech fit on there? And what shapes would they take based on um, the shape of his body? At least as best as possible is what I'm shooting for. This part will be filled in black. This part is filled in black. So we figured out the light source is just kind of pretty much above and just a little bit to our left. This is the choice I made. Oh yeah, and his mouth part will be filled in black. Let's go ahead and fill that in black now, just to make sure I don't forget. Easier to fill in with the micron than with the brush a little bit later on, towards the end. I'm seeing here on YouTube, y'all are down for a, a, another group shot video. Good to know. Okay, let's uh, get this other shoulder pad dropped in. Take another question here in just a moment. Appreciate y'all hanging out. Appreciate the all the comments and questions. Hope you're having a good time. I know I'm having a good time. This is a piece I've been looking forward to getting back to. After I penciled it last week, I was really looking forward to getting to this ink stage. Or getting to uh, a point where I could uh, fire up the live stream and, and do the inks here. So definitely this is an illustration I've been itching to get back to. And I'm really looking forward to doing the, uh, the watercolors, hopefully as early as next week. Maybe earlier, not quite sure. Depends on my schedule. So all that to say, make sure you stay tuned to my YouTube channel. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you... You have your notifications set to alert you so that you can join me live. So if I didn't say before, I am back to the 08 micron. Oh, let's see, the little X is here. I will be filling these in with black a little bit later on.
a little bit more there. Okay. Bring this down to the pectoral muscle here. <laughs> this is a very interesting question. How, how would I approach designing an Iron Man armor based on sour apple Skittles? That is a very interesting question. Uh, that would take some thought. I would have to, uh, you know, think that through. I would have to probably go get a pack of Skittles to really connect with specifically that sour apple flavor. Um, so, um, yeah, 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 that would take some, that would definitely take some research. And that research would require eating at least one bag of Skittles. Yeah. Maybe while watching an Iron Man movie or an Avengers movie, while I'm eating it, maybe reading some Iron Man comics uh, to see how would I connect Sour Apple Skittles to Tony Stark or maybe uh, James Rhodey Rhodes. Uh, you know, you just never know. You, that's why I got to do the research. I got to think it through um, as to how would I how would I approach that? So, yeah, very challenging question. Absolutely uh, interesting. Definitely tapping into one of my favorite uh, candies. I do enjoy a delicious bag of Skittles every now and again. Oftentimes when I go to the movies, I have a buddy I go to see uh, the Rift Tracks live movies, which I was really disappointed that COVID uh, has postponed those movies this past summer. Um, I was really looking forward to those because my buddy and I really enjoy going see seeing those. We're big Mystery Science Theater slash Rift Tracks fans. So whenever we go, I usually end up buying one of those movie bag sized uh, bag of, bags of Skittles and pretty much eat the whole thing during the movie. And while it's enjoyable in the moment when I'm done, I kind of feel a little over sugared. Uh, so I've really got to watch how much, got to watch my sugar intake. But it is a, a treat that I try to do uh, responsibly. Try not to eat too many Skittles too frequently. But I tell you, if I get on a Skittle kick, I ride that wave for as long and far as possible. So all this to say, not being able to see the Rift Tracks movies this summer has not allowed me to eat as many Skittles as I usually would during a, a summer movie uh, excursion. So this COVID-19 is, you know, wreaking havoc in so many ways. Couldn't go to the theater, which means I couldn't eat my Skittles as frequently as I would, as I had in previous summers. This is a very long-winded answer. My apologies. What? New question. Next question. Your favorite is uh, Iron Man armor is the modular armor of the 1990s. Yeah, that was a good one. Do I have tips on how to draw figure poses? Hopefully some of my uh, YouTube videos here where I'm drawing uh, figures in poses uh, have, have can be a help to you. So I would say please check out more of my videos and I try to always give tips and tricks as I'm working, uh, usually in the penciling stage. Of uh, So check out some of my pencil illustration videos and hopefully you can learn some tips and tricks from those videos. And I will be sharing more tips and tricks in future videos. So, so do stick with me for, for, for those things. I try to share as many as I can. whenever I can. All right, so this big chunk of black will be filled in later. A little X right there. All 
All right, we, am, I, am I in my taped borders? There we go. Make sure I'm back on screen. How are we looking there? Instagram. All right. So kind of a fun angle here on the Instagram feed. If you're watching on YouTube, swing by my Instagram channel, Instagram account, and check out my IGTV. Uh, hopefully this video will save. My Instagram live stream will save to my IGTV account. And you can see my work, the work on this uh, illustration from a different angle. And you Instagram viewers, come check out my YouTube video if you want to see it from more of a, a downshot rather than this angled uh, iPhone shot. All right, so now we're moving right along into the body. Fill this underarm part there with black a little later on. He is coming together though. It's, it's fun to see it kind of come to life, how it comes to shape. Let's check the Instagram questions. I've seen a handful have come in here. What size paper? This is a nine by 12 piece of uh, Canson artboard. Do I ever draw digitally? Absolutely, yes. In fact, this Iron Man drawing was a digital art piece. So Instagram viewer, make sure you check out my IGD, IGTV uh, account here on my, you can just go to my Instagram account and click on the little IGTV section and uh, you can see the digital art video of this, of this illustration. Or you can come check it out on my YouTube channel. Right, YouTube viewers? So what I'm saying is, you got options. And the link to my YouTube channel is in my uh, bio on my Instagram account. Let's see, who are my favorite members of the Justice League of America and Teen Titans? Fun question. Uh, well, my favorite Justice League members are going to be based on the 1980s uh, Justice League. The uh, Giffen de Matias Justice League, where they uh, became Justice League International. So that's going to be characters like, well, pretty much it. I love that whole team. So Blue Beetle, Booster Gold, um, Martian Manhunter, Mr. Miracle, Guy Gardner, Fire Ice, um, Wally West Flash, Wonder Woman, uh, Power Girl, Captain Atom. Even Nort, Nort uh, of the Green Lanterns. Uh, I just loved all those characters, loved those stories. My favorite era for Justice League, personally, uh, there in the late 80s through early 1990s, uh, up through the uh, Death of Superman comics um, storyline. So, uh, so I'd be, be some of my favorite uh, uh, Justice Leaguers, I almost said Avengers, uh, Justice Leaguers, as far as favorite Teen Titans, um, Probably my favorite for teen, uh, era for Teen Titans was the Wolfman Perez Teen Titans. I mean, that's just such legendary, classic Teen Titans. Those are probably some of the absolute best Teen Titans stories out there. Not to say that the others aren't good. Those are fantastic as well. Don't get me wrong. But there's just something about the new Teen Titans when it debuted in the early 1980s, before I was reading comics. I read those all on back issue. Uh, I really loved uh, Changeling, or who would later... Who later uh, take the name Beast Boy back, but in the 1980s, he, he went by the name Changeling. Um, who else? Who else? Uh, Kid Flash. Absolutely Kid Flash. Wally West as Kid Flash. Um, Cyborg. Starfire. Great, great characters. Those are just some of my favorites. I mean, when they turned uh, Young Justice into the Teen Titans there in the early 2000s, uh, the stuff that uh, Jeff Johns and Mike McCone were doing was fantastic. It was great to see. I, I loved what they did with Impulse, making him Kid Flash. I thought that was kind of a cool evolution of his character for that time. Um, yeah, just, just some of my favorites, just some of them.
Got a lot of areas to fill in black with a brush in a little bit here. I want to make sure I put an X in those places that need to be filled in because I will forget. Even sometimes with having an X in the spot, I can still forget. I can gloss over it, so I gotta be very cautious to uh, pay attention to all of the X's. Still working the 08 micron right now. How are we doing, YouTubers? Any new questions here I can address? Uh, when interesting question. Uh, when drawing Iron Man, um, uh, sorry, I don't have my glasses on, so it's a little hard to read from that far away. Uh, oh, it's because I a new question came in about the Batman trailer, uh, so it's like oh, I don't I understand these words. I thought I just read. <laughs> so going up one here to do. What do I use for a foundation? Basic human anatomy or the anatomy of the suit? Uh, Initially, I think of the human anatomy, but then I also am considering the anatomy of the suit. So it kind of goes hand in hand. I'm, work, I'm thinking about both things at the same time, oftentimes, uh, and kind of working in that regard. Uh, so it's, it's, it's both for me, uh, I would say, it would be my initial answer. Uh, not to say that answer might change, but initially my first thought is it's both ways. Oftentimes when I'm drawing a character, whether they're wearing clothing or an armor, um, is I, I rough out the general body structure and then add what it is on top. So if I'm drawing a character wearing like, say like a leather jacket, like Gambit, he's wearing a trench coat, right? So when I'm drawing Gambit, I draw the human anatomy and then I draw the sleeves and the collar and the jacket, you know, the flowing jacket behind him uh, afterwards. I, I, I want to make sure I don't want to just draw these these sleeves and then put it from a you know draw the head then draw a collar then start drawing the sleeves and then add a hand at the end because there's no guarantee that it's going to fit together right for me for the way i approach my art so i like to rough in the full body of the character and then go in and add the jacket on top so i know that the curves are the wrinkles at like the elbow where like with the like the arm bends is going to have that um, that proper bend or as proper of a bend and uh, arm underneath the sleeve as possible. It makes the character more believable for me in, in that sort of uh, approach. So I guess that would be the same for Iron Man too. Uh, especially in these kind of classic armors where it's, it's a little more it shows the musculature. It's a little more form-fitting. So what was this? Uh, what people ask about the Batman trailer. You were going to ask what I thought of the Batman trailer, then you remembered that I don't watch trailers. Yes, that is correct. I have not watched the Batman trailer. Now, I will watch some trailers, though. though. Though I don't watch a lot of the, like, Star Wars trailers or superhero movie trailers because I'm more than likely going to see those movies anyway, so I don't need the trailer to sell me on it. I'm not opposed to watching trailers in general, uh, like Stranger Things. I remember when Stranger Things, I use this as an example as to why a trailer is good for me, or a, tra a trailer might be something I want to see. It's when I don't know what that thing is. Stranger Things Season 1. Saw the commercial for it on TV. My wife and I were watching something and then they had the commercial for Stranger Things coming to Netflix. And I'm like, what is this? This looks weird and creepy and it's set in the 1980s. All right, let, let, tell me more. Tell me just enough. And, you know, it kind of whet my appetite. It piqued my interest, if you will. So that was a, a, a sense where a trailer was uh, good, a good thing for me. 
uh, where it's like, I need this trailer so that I can be aware of this is something I might want to see because I have no understanding of what this is. Star Wars, superheroes, I understand enough that, um, that if I watch the trailer, I might be able to figure out some stuff or um, it's already something I'm probably going to see anyway, you know? Um, so it's like, I don't need to be convinced to see it. If it's a new Star Wars movie, I'm going to go see it. I've seen them all. I'll see the next ones. Um, so I don't need to be sold on seeing Star Wars. You just tell me when the next new Star Wars movie is coming and, and I'll go. Now, I know a lot of people like to watch uh, trailers to get hyped for a Star Wars movie. Totally respect that. That's totally cool. Absolutely. You do you. Enjoy it. Just because I don't want to watch it doesn't mean I look down on anyone who wants to watch a trailer. I say watch them. If that's your thing, go for it. Me, personally, I don't. And here's why. Back when The Force Awakens was coming out, during Celebration, the Star Wars convention, they showed the teaser trailer for The Force Awakens. So my wife and I is like, oh, we got to see this. And we thoroughly enjoyed the trailer. It was just like, oh my gosh, so hyped. But when they showed the scene of Han and Chewie stepping onto the Falcon, and Han says, Chewie, we're home. Uh, a lifelong Star Wars fan, seeing that moment, just it just floored me. It was just like, oh man, all the feels. And then I thought, maybe that was that, that, those were too many feels here for the trailer. How much more powerful would that scene have been if I saw it happen for the first time in the movie, in the context of everything. How much more powerful would those emotions have been? So it's like, I felt like I kind of missed out on an opportunity there. So it was that moment I realized, you know what? I don't really need to see the Star Wars trailers. I know I'm going to go see these movies. I want to experience it all for the first time when I see the movie. So I, so I started to experiment and do that. Stopped watching Avengers movies, the Marvel MCU trailers, Stopped watching the Star Wars trailers. And then when I started going to see the movies, every single image was brand new to me. And it was just like overwhelming. I felt like a kid again. It was such a rush, such a thrill for me. So it took me a while to develop the discipline to, to avoid the trailers. If it's something I know I want to see, don't look at the trailer. Uh, not to say that I do it perfectly every time. I did watch the Wonder Woman teaser trailer. Love that New Order soundtrack. Oh my gosh. Love that, cannot wait for the movie. But since then, I've avoided the the like official trailers because it's like, ah, you know, I, I broke down and watched the Wonder Woman teaser, Wonder Woman 84, I should say, Wonder Woman 84 teaser trailer. Uh, so now, you know, I'm, I, I am hyped to see Wonder Woman, but since then I've been avoiding the, the, the Wonder Woman 84 trailers because it's like, I don't want to know anymore. Uh, so, um, So yeah, it's not like a hard, fast rule. It's just a way I, I have evolved my movie-going experience. And if it's something I'm aware of, so that's something I'm already a fan of, you don't need to convince me. I'm in. And I want to experience it in a big, big first-time sort of way as I go. So that's just, that's just my approach. That's the reasoning why I know a lot of people know I don't watch trailers or oftentimes don't watch trailers. Like I said, it's not a hard, fast rule, but for you new viewers, I want to make sure you understood where I, where I come from in that. But I never look down on people who watch, like, watch trailers. I don't want anyone to think that because I don't prefer to watch trailers means that I think everyone should do that. Absolutely not. That's just me. Just my experience. Just the way I roll. And like I said, trailers can be helpful for me if it's something I've never heard of before and I want to learn more about. And Stranger Things, that, that commercial was perfect. It teased me just enough to where it's like, wait, what is this about? I've got to tune into this and see and, and, and watch it. It looks interesting to me. I have no idea what's going on. So, so yeah. So all this to say, Batman trailer, haven't watched it yet. <laughs> Sometimes I'll go back after watching the movie and I'll then go back and watch the trailer. Just to see what was the trailer like. 
And one thing I don't like about trailers is when they put in scenes that are not in the movie. Which is kind of reinforced why I don't want to watch a trailer for something I really want to see. And, and I can use uh, Rogue One, uh, Star Wars Rogue One, as, as an example. So I didn't watch the trailer, watched the movie, then went back and watched the trailer and saw there were scenes in the trailer that were not in the movie at all. Like when uh, uh, Jin Erso is up on the scaffolding and the TIE fighter rises up in front of her. It was not in the movie. Now, if I had seen the trailer first, I would have been watching the movie waiting for that really cool scene to show up and it not show up. And then I'd be frustrated and I was like, hey, where's my catwalk TIE fighter scene? So, uh, so that's another thing I don't, I'm not too crazy about, uh, or, or it's too too risky for me to see a trailer, is if I see an image, I, it's, it's gonna stick with me. I'm gonna wanna see that in the context of the movie. And, uh, and, and you're not always gonna get that because uh, sometimes they put in scenes in the trailer that are not in the movie. And, uh, and I'm gonna remember that, like I'm gonna remember that, that scene from the trailer and I'm gonna wanna see it in the movie. And uh, it might, uh, might be a little too frustrating for me in the moment. I might come kind of come out of the story because I'm going, wait a second, the trailer said this was going to happen and it didn't. So, so that's, that's another example of why I prefer to watch the trailer afterwards. So my trailers truly, truly do trail the actual movie. Did y'all know that the trailers are called trailers because in the olden days of movies, they'd show those previews of movies after the, ma the, the main picture? Like you'd watch the movie, then they'd show you coming attractions afterwards, uh, is what I heard. That's So they trailed the main feature. That's why they're called trailers, which I, I thought was really interesting. So I'm switching back to the zero one here. Because this hand's a little further back than this this hand here. His his left hand is further away, so uh, I want to build up the lines as needed, so that they're not too thick. Definitely don't want them at the same thickness as his his right hand here, uh, because of the depth I'm trying to convey. I still want some some thickness to the contours, so that the fingers uh, pop off of the the page and the rest of his hand, but. Uh, I don't want them so thick that they match the width of the fore foreground hand uh, because then that would create a weird kind of dissidence from uh, what is in the foreground and what is further back away from us. So using a smaller micron, I can build the line up as needed, as necessary. All right, so let's, let's uh, see, any other questions? What about when I go to see new movies in the theaters? How do I avoid the trailers? Excellent question. I leave the theater. I have gotten up and I've left the theater. With like the movie starts, it's like I tell my friends. Sometimes my wife comes with me, and because uh, she doesn't, she she's kind of in a similar boat. Like she does, she she doesn't often watch the trailers either for like Star Wars or MCU movies, and uh, so she'll like come with me, and uh, so we'll leave the theater, stand outside the door, and listen, and. Uh, or if like I'm seeing a movie with friends or family, I was like, text me when the trailers are done and then I'll come back in. Uh, so we have them like pre-prepared text. All I have to do is hit send so that they're not disturbing the other viewers or other audience members. Uh, Cause let's not text during the movie people. Try not to do that. But usually it's like my wife and I can stand by the door and listen and it's like, okay, the trailers are done. Is that the... And then, and then we race back in uh, to for the start of the movie. So that's how I avoid trailers for movies I want to see when I'm at a theater of seeing a movie that I am there to see. An absolute worst case scenario, if we can't get out of the theater in time, we'll kind of close our eyes and plug our ears <laughs> so that we can't see or hear um, much of the movie. So, um, but that's like absolute worst case scenario. Rarely has that happened. But, uh, but yeah, I take my, I take my, uh, 
trailer avoidance to a pretty serious degree. So I went into Spider-Man Homecoming not knowing the Vulture being the villain, or did you at least know that much? Yeah, I knew the Vulture was the villain because, you know, I see things in my Instagram feed or in my um, Facebook or Twitter feed, you know, I'll see like screen caps people post. So, um, so I knew the Vulture was gonna be the villain, um, but I, uh, I knew Michael Keaton was playing the Vulture, so I knew things like that, but I just hadn't, I'm not seeing it like, in acting out on the on the screen on my small screen uh so um but like like say with thor ragnarok i love thor ragnarok but i went to go see thor ragnarok i assumed it would be as dark as thor dark world because that was the last thor movie there was so i assumed it was going to continue in that vein not realizing it was going to be a 1980s comic book brought to life you know with a 1980s Mark Mothersbaugh soundtrack, you know, and it's just like, this was not what I expected for this Thor movie at all. It was so beyond what I expected it to be. And I was just like overwhelmed with, with like awesome. It was like, this is not, this is, even now I'm less speechless about it. it. It was like, I thought it was gonna be like Thor Dark World. I just assumed, because that was my last Thor experience, like Thor solo movie experience, not counting the Avengers movies. So I thought, this is that that's what I was expecting because that was the last one that they did and to have all these bright colors and this cool soundtrack and 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 the humor to it uh I just ate it up it's like oh my gosh this might be my favorite one of my favorite MCU movies and really kind of made Thor one of my favorite MCU characters um because it was so unexpected. It was just, I did not know that this was how it was gonna be, and I it just was like a thrill a minute. The entire movie, just not knowing what to expect at all, uh, because my expectations were in a completely different place. And having that reversal of expectation was so much fun. So, such a fun surprise. It, it played to my sensibilities so well. Definitely made me a, a Taika Waititi fan. Kind of solidified that. I, I really enjoy Taika Waititi's approach to movie making. So uh, really, really enjoyed that. All right, let's grab that ellipse template again for the other repulsor ray port. Gonna have a slightly different shaped oval because of the angle on the hand. Just like that. Oops, get back inside the the tape. How are we doing on the on the Instagram? Are we where we need to be? Looking looking good. All right. How's it going, Instagrammers? Let's take a let's take a question for Instagram. Do I usually create thumbnails before I create the final piece? Uh, yes, I often do. Um, not always, but often. I will do a quick little thumbnail sketch, little rough sketch, a little tiny sketch of the pose that I'm seeing in my head, or maybe I come up with, that might spark some new ideas for poses, uh, or layouts, definitely for layouts. You have to do it for layouts, absolutely. Um, so yeah, thumbnail sketches, critical, critical. Love doing thumbnail sketches to really kind of start the process, for sure. Um, you might have seen some of those here on my Instagram, or not my Instagram, so sorry, Instagrammers. Uh, YouTube, my YouTube uh, videos where I do little, quick little rough thumbnail sketches. Um, I'll probably try to do more of those, of, um, of kind of just thinking out the process, thinking out the shapes, thinking out how am I gonna put this all together? Um, what, what are some, it's kind of like just brainstorming. Brainstorming with my pencil. How do I want to uh, put this whole thing together? 
What new ideas do I come up with now that I'm starting to sketch things out? What new ideas are coming to me before I commit to starting my final image? See, in this arm here, we have some uh, shadow lines here on the bicep because it's tucked in. Up under his arm there, okay. Or up under his shoulder, I should say. All right, let's get back to his, and we're getting close to being done. Getting close to being done with the inks. Thanks for hanging out with me, y'all. It's been fun to talk, and the fun's not ending just yet. But I know we did talk a lot about movie trailers here. This is not probably not what some of y'all signed up for. My apologies. Uh, but it is about just kind of hanging out. We'll talk art. We'll talk geek stuff. Um, so uh, hopefully you're still having fun. Uh, so I appreciate y'all hanging here with me. And uh, yeah. Hopefully geeking out is is uh, cool with y'all. But we are going to leave the movie trailer talk behind. We can talk about other stuff now. I think we have talked movie trailers ad nauseum. So moving on, moving on. Using a thinner line here for these banded metal portions of his, we'll just call these uh, shorts. X there, X, 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 X. Right, this one's so small, let's go ahead and fill it in now. I have the shadow here inside these banded metal lines. Fill this one in. It's small. If they're small, I'll go ahead and fill them in now. Then we'll take a new question here in just a moment. Thank you for your patience, everybody. And also, thank you for your understanding that I can't address every question. But I'm trying to address as many as I can. But I do apologize if I'm not able to get to your question or comment. So let's see. Let's take one from YouTube next here. Do I prefer the Copic Multiliners or the Pigma Microns? I like them both. I like them both. I use both. I own both. I buy both. I use both. I like both. Hopefully I made that clear. <laughs> I, do, I, I probably use more Microns just because I've been using them longer, but I'm totally down for using um, the Copic Multiliners. They're fantastic pens. They work for me. They work for what I do. Um, I like the disposable Copic Multiliners. I like the Copic uh, SP Multiliners. Now i got to slide the board up here a little bit for this leg so that it's fully on screen for the YouTube viewers. All right, let's come over here and take a question from Graham Town. Top 30 sketch artists I like. <laughs> this is a question from the Instagram. To answer that question, I would say go check out who I follow on Instagram and you'll see about well over 750 people that I, whose art I enjoy and, and follow. Uh, I don't think I could list 30 people here uh, right now. That would be, 
that would be take up a little too uh, take up a little too much brain power to think of 30 names um but uh yeah check out who i follow here on instagram and and you'll see a lot of people whose artwork i really enjoy What do I think about the future of inkers? Uh, you know, as long as there are pencilers that need inkers to tackle the inks, the inkers are there. So uh, yeah, I, I, I have learned so much from so many fantastic inkers just by looking at their work. Uh, the, the inkers I worked with at Extreme Studios, uh, my favorite inkers from the 80s and 90s and, and today. Sounds like a radio commercial ad playing your hits from the 80s, 90s, and today. Uh, let's see, um, inkers like Scott Williams, Klaus Janssen, Danny Mickey, Norm Ratmond, uh, of course working with my friend Larry Stucker, uh, Dan Green, uh, Bob Wyasek, um, Terry Austin, oh, legendary Terry Austin. Um, so many fantastic inkers. Sandra Hope is fantastic, love seeing her stuff. Dex uh, Dexter, I always say his name is Dexter, 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 why am I forgetting Dexter's last name? Uh, yeah, it'll, it'll come to me, it'll come to me. See, this is why I can't, couldn't name 30, 30 sketch artists right off the top of my head, because, uh, it's hard for me to remember it, all the names. I don't know why I'm blanking on Dexter's, it's not Dexter Soy, is it? Dexter... I know who I'm talking about, Dexter. He goes by Dexter on, on Instagram. What? I know Dexter. Why am I blanking on his last name? Dexter, my apologies, my friend. My apologies that I'm blanking on your last name. Cannot believe it. So embarrassing. Uh, other inkers, Mark Morales. Uh, just to name a few. What are tips at getting better at drawing buildings? Get her, to get better at drawing buildings. Um, question here from Graham Town. Uh, I would say for me, it was learning perspective. One point, two point, and three point perspective. And uh, I imagine there are probably books out there. I learned it at art school, so I didn't really use a book. They didn't have a book that we learned from. We just learned by them teaching us, by doing it. So uh, I, I can't recommend a specific book for that, but I'm sure if you searched how to draw perspective uh, books like on Amazon, check, check the user reviews and ratings and stuff like that. You might be able to find a good book there. Uh, so learning that and look at real life photos of buildings. Anytime I go to New York, I've gone to New York Comic Con every year since 2006 when they started it back up again. And pretty much every year I go, I'm taking photos of buildings all across New York, all the different uh, neighborhoods and stuff, uh, brownstones and uh, office buildings and, and, and uh, you know, traffic, streets, street scenes, uh, overhead shots. Like I'll, I'll be up in a building and I'll be able to look down and see like water towers and stuff. I'll take tons of photos of rooftops. It's like, this is gold here. So I come home and download like several hundred Ill, uh, photos I've taken that I have uh, reference for. Now, if you can't go to New York and take photos, you can like Google search uh, photos of New York. Um, uh, so yeah, just look at real buildings and study them. Look at how they're put together. Look at the trim, look at the lines, look at the shapes and reflect that in your illustration to have to help develop believable backgrounds. Uh, interiors, you know, if I have to draw the inside of a room, an office building, or, uh, you know, like a person's office or uh, a home, I will reference that. I will look up photos of that and it's look, like, look at where is everything at? What are the details? So it's not just, so that my backgrounds can have more believability and it's not just sparse, like, uh, well, there'd be a table and a chair and a bowl of fruit. It's like, that's not enough for Peter Parker's apartment. 
we need to make it you know we need photograph equipment we need like probably he probably has a at least a laptop and a couch and probably has some some takeout boxes stacked up somewhere uh, you know on the on the kitchen table or by the sink you know it's like how do you make it look lived in how would peter parker live and what would be in his apartment so it's like looking at photos of that even looking at photos of my home i could take photos around my house or just looking around my house it's like i can utilize some of this as reference to how i would draw the interiors of a building so so look 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 at photos look at photos look at real life if you want to make your illustrations have that real life sort of believability so let's take questions over here at, at on on Dexter Vines. Thank you, Vines. Ah, Dexter Vines is the name of the inker. Thank you so much, y'all. Thank you for that, Vines. How did I forget Vines? Hopefully, I'll never forget again. Dexter Vines is the inker I was thinking of. Yes, thank you so much, y'all. I knew I knew some one or many people <laughs> would have that name for me. Thank you. Ah. I'll actually be able to go to sleep tonight. You know how it is when like you're trying to think of something. It's like, oh, what was the name of that person or actor? Or what was the what was the movie that had that one scene in it and you can't think of it? And you, you spend all day. Well, fortunately, we have the internet now, so it's usually actually easy to look up. But before that, or when you don't have access to the internet, where the internet just doesn't have, you don't know the right search string to find that thing you need, and you can't get the information. You go through the day, you finally kind of put it out of your head because you distract yourself with the other stuff you need to do or having dinner or whatever, uh, talking to people, you know, whatever, and, and they don't know the answer, so you stop talking to them about it because they can't help you out because uh, they don't know who you went to school with in, in third grade. And, uh, and you just can't think of the name of that person. And you go to bed, and then you sit up bolt right like at 2 a.m. Gah! It was... Joey Jojo, that was the person's name. Ah, uh, how could I not? How did it take me 15 hours to remember that? And I had to be completely unconscious. You know that feeling where it's like, ah, uh, it wakes me up from a dead sleep. And I, and somehow my brain, when I stopped trying to think so hard about it, it finally showed up. It's kind of one of those sort of sorts of moments. I could have like totally forgotten. I, I had forgotten Dexter Vines' last name, gone to bed. And then somehow in my dreams, my brain processes it for me and it wakes me right up. And I, I wake up shouting vines and scare my wife half to death. It's like, what? What, what are you talking about? Vines? Vines? What, what kind of vines? Grape vines? Killer mutant vines? What are you talking about? What were you dreaming? It's like, oh no, I was during the live stream. I couldn't remember Dexter's last name. Did you, oh, you mean Dexter Vines? Ah, yes, I mean Dexter Vines. I don't know, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me. Waking up in that cold sweat with the... That was the thing. How do I know where to put the reflection of metal? Um, a lot of it's just kind of trial and error. A lot of it's experimentation. But I also consider light source and shadow. And then the reflected light. So, uh, so these are the things I'm going to think about. So since we know where the light source is, it's coming from above, kicks it off just a little bit to our left. So that's where it's going to really hit, and that's where a lot of our red will be going when, when it's time to do the colors. And then, um, then the black, because there's a lot of black on the red parts of, of Iron Man's armor in this iteration. Uh, you know, we got those, those parts figured out and chunked in here which we'll be filling in here momentarily. And it's always fun to fill in all the blacks because then it like really like solidifies. And then, uh, and then any reflection I do, uh, one, the black part is kind of reflecting, it's kind of like the, the environment around him is coming across as like this black gloppy shape, like in his pectoral muscles and the, through the gauntlets and things like that or in the helmet. And I think of the planes and angles of, the, of, of Iron Man as well. Like here with his helmet, you know, we have the forehead, the side of the head, the top of the head, this side of the head. So I'm leave, so I'm I'm sculpting in those shapes to help convey the shape of his helmet. Same with his gauntlets, his fingers, his pectoral muscles, his abdomen. 
all these pieces I'm going to keep in mind. And then I, uh, I'll put in uh, some kind of reflected lines, some kind of faded lines for where kind of a reflected light might go. Um, even added some here at the corners of his pectoral muscles here. Just a little bit, just kind of break it up a little bit. So, uh, so those are the main things I think about. Where is the light coming from? Where would the shadow fall? And then where would the reflected light, which is coming down, probably bouncing off the ground of the of his his uh, let's say he's in his uh, laboratory, so you know it's going to have a metal ground, or even if it's not metal, there's still a little bit of a reflected light that's going to bounce back up and hit the opposite side of where the shadow is. These are the things that I I, I tend to think about, and uh, and then build my 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 shapes my my light shapes my shadow shapes and my reflected area shapes accordingly hopefully that makes sense and hopefully you see that reflected reflected using the reflected in a different way uh reflected in the artwork here all right so we got this other leg we're in the we're in the home stretch gang again i really appreciate y'all hanging out with me I've been having a lot of fun, and I hope you have too. Hopefully you've learned a little something. Whether it be why I don't like to watch movie trailers of things I know I'm gonna go see anyway, or uh, that I enjoy Skittles as a movie snack candy. Or really, almost any other time. Who knows how many comic book pages I've drawn while snacking on Skittles. When it comes to drawing and snacking, like if, if I'm going to snack while I'm drawing, I'm very careful about what I choose. I love nacho cheese Doritos, my favorite snack chip. Um, there, you just learned another thing. Uh, but I can't eat Cheetos while drawing because I'll get that, Cheeto, that nacho cheese dust all over the illustration. And that's not the look I'm going for. That's not the effect I want here on my artwork. So I cannot eat uh, any any type of food that would you know color my fingers because then i'm going to touch the artboard and i'm going to get nacho cheese all over it now maybe one day i'll do that for this really interesting nacho cheese effect um maybe i'll do that sometime soon <laughs> just because i want to eat some doritos um but like a like um like just some raw almonds or um uh or if i want something unhealthy maybe uh a bag of, of, of skittles um you know, maybe if I want a sweet treat like that, they're safe to eat because they're not going to stain my fingers, which would then thusly stain the artwork. Um, but yeah, I'm not I'm not opposed to eating while while drawing. It's just because sometimes I do need to eat, and it's like I don't have time to get up and take a break. I just need a little something, a little fuel to keep the the furnace going. Um, probably actually will need some fuel after I finish this live stream. Um, so. Uh, yeah, anything that I can eat that does not stain the fingers, I can eat while drawing. So I'll have just like a little cup of, of almonds or those rare occasions, maybe a little snack pack of Skittles. Have you ever noticed that they, a, a comedian addresses this and it, and it's so, it stuck with me. When they have the, like the small like Snicker bars or small little packs of M&Ms or, or Skittles, they call those fun size. That's not fun size. The big ones, that's the fun size. That's fun. This, these little ones, that's not fun size. That really stuck with me. It's like, you're absolutely right. The small ones is not as fun as the big ones. I find eating now, eating more candy to be more fun than eating less candy. But though, you know, gotta be, I gotta, I gotta, gotta say though, we gotta be careful with how much candy we, one does eat. I don't wanna mislead anyone. I try not to eat a lot of candy. I try to I try to maintain my sugar intake just for my health. I don't want to eat too much sugar like that. But it's okay for a treat every now and again. So actually the fun size is more of the sane size, I think. Um, otherwise I'll get that like one pound bag of Skittles and try to eat the whole thing while watching Avengers Endgame. Uh, that should get me from beginning to end if I eat, ate the whole bag. Not the best idea. Not the best idea. It sounds like a fun idea, but it's really probably not a good idea to do. I, I'm sure every doctor would say, don't do that. 
Are you crazy? I'll say I am a bit crazy for Skittles, so yes. Can I switch that to a bag of Doritos instead? They probably wouldn't uh, smile at that either. Again, let's now <laughs> let's address some art questions here. We're here to talk about art, not snack chips and and uh, tasty candy treats. Kiwi. Uh oh, we're, we're going back into to, to um, snack treats again. Kiwi fruit vines. They make kiwi. They like is that like red vines, but kiwi fruit. Is that what I'm to understand? Because if that's true. I'd like to try that. I enjoy kiwi fruit. I do enjoy red vines. So I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest with you, gag. There are red vine people and there are Twizzler people. I enjoy both, but if I had to pick a side, I think I'm a Twizzler person. I, I just prefer the texture of a Twizzler over the red vine. I know it sounds crazy to you red vine people, but there. I said it. I said it. We're moving on. Um, but I would enjoy, if they do make red vines with, in kiwi fruit, I would definitely try that. And I don't turn down red vines. I'll enjoy a red vine every now and again. Let's see, looking for... How's my New Mutants reread going? Uh, it's going slowly. I think I'm, I'm up to about issue 9 or 10. Maybe a little bit beyond that. I'm at the point where they meet Amara Aquila, aka, aka Magma, in Nova Roma in South America. I'm st I'm working through that part. So they they just Magma has just uh, had her uh, mutant powers manifest. So uh, that's where I am in my New Mutants reread. For those of y'all that don't know, uh, this summer I've been rereading and re been reading some stuff I never read growing up as a kid and rereading some stuff that I grew up read growing up as a kid but read completely out of order and New Mutants I have never read that from issue 1 to 100 I read it was all intermittent I read probably read regularly from issue 50 something to 100 but the first 100 or first you know 50 to 60 issues I read completely out of order because I, I I I dug up I found the back issues I bought the back issues out of order so uh, starting from the New Mutants graphic novel and into the regular series, read it all out of order. So now I'm going through and I'm rereading those in order. Um, and plus I haven't read those since I was a kid. So it's kind of been really fun to do because uh, I love the New Mutants, some of my favorite, favorite characters and comics. Um, I'm also reading West Coast Avengers for the first time. I read intermittent issues of that, especially at the beginning of it. Um, the only part of it that I read like all the way through were the John Byrne issues that were that came out later, um, which I own and love those. Um, but the very beginning of the series, I, I never got a chance to really read that. Um, so I'm about 24 issues into Avengers West Coast or West Coast Avengers. I guess it's called West Coast Avengers. Then they flip the name like around issue around the John Byrne era, I guess, where they changed it to Avengers West Coast. I don't know if it was a branding change, but yeah. So those are the two series I've been reading the most of late is uh, New Mutants and um, Avengers, or West Coast Avengers, I should say. And I did read the Hawkeye miniseries and the West Coast Avengers miniseries prior to starting the Avengers, West Coast Avengers uh, regular series. So I could have the full Full information, full, I want to say run, like a, the lead-in. I wanted the full lead-in to the, the West Coast Avengers uh, regular series. So I thought, well, I should start with the miniseries. And then someone said, read Hawkeye 2. And it was good to read Hawkeye because that's where he met Mockingbird. Not going to say any more than that in case you want to read it. Don't want to give away any spoilers. But that's where he met Mockingbird. I don't think that's giving away too much of a spoiler because she's on the cover, so you kind of get the idea that she's a part of the story. But I'll just leave it at that. And those were four issue miniseries, so they were pretty, you know, it didn't take too long to read. All right, so. This is coming along here.
Just a little bit more. Let's see. I got some long lines here to do for the this kind of section of his boot. So I want to go back to the drafting tools. Use the old French curve here to get a nice, clean, slightly curved line. So it just, just makes it look a little cleaner, a little tighter. And so reading West Coast Avengers really kind of influenced me to draw this version of Iron Man because when uh, they started the regular series, this was Iron Man's armor. This was where he was, you know, that was the time where he was wearing his Silver Centurion armor. So I've been reading a lot featuring this armor. So it really made me want to draw it. So yeah, reading that comic really influenced this live stream, this character choice. All right, let's try to take another YouTube and another Instagram question. Here we go. I'm, I'm learning what people are snacking when they draw like uh, gummy bears and and could could one eating nachos while drawing use the nachos to color the comic or color their illustration? Uh, I would imagine they could. I would say that is possible. Um, I hope they are proficient at nacho coloring. Otherwise, it could be a a bit of a mess. But maybe that's the look they're going for. I love nachos. I think they are delicious. Um, my favorite taco joint makes a great nacho here in SoCal. So uh, that's a that's a, a treat I have every once in a while, not regularly, but uh, um, I do enjoy nachos. And I don't know if I would waste my nachos to on my illustration. I would rather eat them. So, but yeah, if someone were to color their their illustration using nachos, hope they have some guacamole because they might need some green. Ooh, I do love guacamole. All right, let's take a question here on on the uh, Instagram here. Whoop, come back. Let's see. SDC Online was a blast. Any plans for more online con slash artist alley in the near future? Uh, probably for New York Comic Con. Uh, I might be doing this in October for New York Comic Con. So we will see uh, how that goes. Uh, I will, if I'm able to do that, or do some online, my online artist alley, as you see here, like I did for San Diego Comic Con. Uh, I'll make, if I'm uh, able to do that, uh, I will make announcements on my social media and probably website uh, about my live streams and when to tune in and things like that. So, uh, so stay tuned uh, for more information as we draw closer to what I guess still is, because I think New York Comic Con is still doing something online, uh, even though they had to cancel the uh, actual live uh, attendance portion of it, which is a real shame. I love going to New York City. It is so different from Southern California, and I love it. I love it. I love going to New York City. I spend extra time there. I usually come in a couple of days early. Uh, this last year, we, my wife and I stayed like an extra five days, three, th oh no, we stayed an extra three days. Extra three days, because uh, we were, one, invited to the Stan Lee Memorial uh, special that they aired on ABC television. We were got to, invited to go to that taping, which was the Monday after New York Comic Con, so we extended our stay to see that and uh, to see some friends who live in uh, New York and stuff like that. So uh, loved having those extra days in New York. It was, it's, it's just, yeah, it's like, it's so going to a different world for me and I really enjoy it, love everything about it. And like I said, I've been going to New York Comic Con since 2006. So it is definitely a, a one of my favorite parts of the year. Uh, 
I mean, I love going to other places. Don't get me wrong. I love going to Seattle and Phoenix and Chicago and Dallas and anywhere else we can go. Um, San Diego Comic Con, of course. Love going to those places as well. But there's just something about New York City that really is really fun. Well, one, Marvel is there, so I can see all the people I work with at Marvel. I can stop by the offices and see them and, and whatnot. So that's always a treat as well. Uh, but I don't know. It's just, I guess because there's just so much going on in the city. It's like, there's al it's always on, you know? Uh, if, you want, if you want brisket at 3 a.m., you're more than likely able to find a place selling brisket at 3 a.m. And it's probably really good brisket. So, um, so you know, it's it's like that kind of place, you know? And uh, now I'm just picking brisket. I don't know if there's a place that sells brisket. I'm sure there are some New Yorkers who could probably say, yeah, Todd, you, what you want to do is go down to Brisket Joe's over on 3rd. He's got the best brisket at 3 a.m. That's the place you want to go. And if you and if, if you got that sort of info for me, please DM it to me. I, I'd love to know. Um, but uh, but yeah, that's it's just it's just such an interesting place. It's just so so cool. And I'm finally starting to learn how to ride the subways. Oh, I used to be terrified of the subways, uh, mainly because um, here's a little New York Comic Con story for y'all as I fill in the blacks to this uh, illustration here. Um, New York Comic Con, I'm uh, heading home. It's time to go to the airport. I would take the subway to the airport and to JFK, and I knew where to get, I thought I knew where to get on. Apparently, I didn't. I didn't realize you had to be on one side to go one direction and the other side platform to go the opposite direction. So I'm using a Pentel Pocket Brush Pen, for those of you who are wondering what I'm filling in the blacks with. Pentel Pocket Brush Pen. Uh, so I... Uh, I thought, you know what? I'm gonna ask a native New Yorker, is this going to JF, well, this, does this one go to JFK airport? So I turned to this nice person. They look nice to me. I said, excuse me, does this subway go to uh, uh, JFK airport? And she goes, yeah. I'm like, fantastic, hop on. And I just rode, just kept waiting for them to say my, my uh, stop. Wasn't paying attention to all the stops along the way. If I'd known some of the stops along the way, I could have told out, been able to tell I was going in the wrong direction. I went to the World Trade Center, or where the World Trade Center was. They were still building the new one at that time. And I get off, and there's a there's an actual uh, subway employee kind of guy uh, there. And I'm going, I'm trying to get to... J and I go, this is World Trade Center? I was trying to get to John JFK Airport. And they're like, oh, yeah, you're on the wrong train. What you want to do is take this one to here, get off here, get on there, and then you're on your way. It's like, ah, I'm running out of time. So I do as the person says, I'm now back on track. It's like, okay, I'll make it, I'll just make it. I, I'll get through security and, I'll, and I'll, I'll be able to catch my flight with just moments to spare. The subway stalls, it breaks down. We're sitting there in, in the tunnel for like 20 minutes. I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can make it. Subway starts up again, we're going. We finally get to the part where we're out of the city and heading towards JFK and I'm able to get cell service on my phone and I see it is now just as we're getting to my JFK stop that's the moment my flight is taking off so by the time I get off the subway take the tram to the airport get to my uh, JetBlue gate or, or to the JetBlue terminal and go to check in they go yeah the, that, the flight took off and that was the last one going to California uh, we can get you on a flight tomorrow morning. And I'm like, gah. And so ever since then, I was always nervous about taking a subway because I was always afraid I was going to go the wrong way. Um, now that my wife comes with me to uh, the conventions, she loves all modes of travel. And she is like, no, we can figure it out. We can figure it out. And we could. We, you know, she She was willing to really do the homework and figure out which direction do we need to go on? It's like, okay, this woman knows the subways. My wife, she's the subway queen. I will, you know, overcome my my fear, if you will, of, of going the wrong direction on subways. And now I, I feel more confident and, and can actually figure out the, the puzzle of those subways. Um, and uh, so yeah, so that's my little story there. The, the, uh, so I had to spend an extra night in New York City uh, 
because I missed my flight home. And uh, now I take the Long Island Railroad. Oh, so luxurious taking the Long Island Railroad. Just two stops before it gets to the uh, airport. Uh, cost you five bucks more, but so, so worth it. So, so worth it. Um, room for, for me to uh, keep the luggage, uh, especially the time of day that we leave. Uh, it's not, it's not crowded. So, uh, yeah, love taking the Long Island Railroad to and from JFK to uh, Penn Station. So, um, so there you go. There, there's my little New York Comic Con story from a decade ago. Uh, forgot how I got onto that topic there. Oh, just lo loving New York City. Loving New York City. In fact, I'm so I've I've been going to Midtown for a week, week and a half every year for the past. 14 years, I now know that area just enough to give people directions. I had someone stop me on the street at 11 p.m. at night because I had to go get a pineapple for my Sean Spencer cosplay for the convention the next day. I'm heading back to the hotel, and this this couple stops me and they ask me how do I get to the port? How do they get to the Port Authority bus terminal? And it's like, I know how to direct you to that place. I'm from California. I don't live here, but I can tell you how to get there. I felt so accomplished and then last year i was able to help uh this family from france they were going in the wrong direction they asked me how do i how do we get to this certain place i go oh kind of pulled up their map app and i could tell they were from france or at least french canada because their their phone the direction the map app was all in french and i took french in high school though i could not speak it so fortunately the the, the wife the mother spoke uh enough english that i was able to give them directions I was able to kind of get them directed back to the direction they needed to be to get onto the subway they were looking to find. So, you know, I felt like, ah, oh, this feels good that I, I know at least this area, the, you know, this, this chunk of New York well enough uh, that I can help direct other travelers to where they want to go. So far, I'm two for two. At least I hope they got to where I directed them to. I'm, I'm going on faith that the directions I gave them, they were able to follow and were good. You know, I don't know how their story turned out. Maybe those people I completely sent the wrong way, but in my mind, I, I, think, I believe I gave them excellent directions and they got where they needed to be. In all reality, I, they, they might not have gotten where they needed to be and I am operating off of a delusion, but right now I'm just gonna ride that train as they're all successes, two for two. But yeah, I never considered till just now, like, well, maybe they didn't get to where they wanted to go. Oh my goodness. I hope that's not the case. God bless them. So, uh, yeah. New York Comic Con. That's how we got onto this one. <laughs> New York Comic Con live streams. Oh, man. That's right. Yeah, hopefully so. <laughs> All this to say, I hope, I hope to. I hope to. Stay tuned. Almost done here, just a few more spots. We'll take one more YouTube question and one more Instagram question. Do I still curse the, sub, uh, the woman in the subway who lied to me? I never cursed her. I never cursed her. I don't know what her story was. Maybe she was mistaken. She, I assumed she was a local. Maybe she was a tourist like me. So I don't curse her. No, 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 no. No cursing, didn't curse her then. Um, I had really no one to blame but myself. Um, I should have done a little bit more of the legwork, more of the research. So I don't, I don't curse her. Didn't curse her then. I don't curse her now. Nothing but grace on her. Hope she is well. I don't wish any ill will on her whatsoever. None, none whatsoever. N none, none at all. None whatsoever. I'm trying to say too many phrases at the same time. So, uh, let's see. Find a uh, question here. Scroll back a little bit. Say. Do I prefer inking my own work? Yes, yes I do. Uh, just because it's fun, uh, it's fun to take the, the line work that I see all the way to the finished product and then pass that on to my colorist. Uh, I do like working with other inkers. I love seeing their styles, but I've had so much fun developing my inking style and uh, it's really uh, something I really enjoy and I really do prefer to ink myself if possible because it is so much fun for me. Um, so, so yes, I would say I do prefer inking myself, but I'm not opposed to being inked by other professional inkers, but it's just right now Marvel just assumes I'm going to ink myself and 
And so when they hire me to, to draw something, it's a given that I'm going to pencil and ink it. So yeah, so let's see over here on, on Gramtown, let's see if we can find some questions here that I have not addressed yet. Your worst fear. My worst fear is getting on the subway the wrong direction and missing my flight home. That's my worst fear. <laughs> That's actually a question here on, on Gramtown, my worst fear. Let's see. Let's see. So this cop So this was uh penciled first then photocopied. Uh actually it was penciled digitally. Uh, and you can see the digital video here on either my on my YouTube or my Instagram TV account. Um, they're uh, simulcast, and this uh, just as this one is. Uh, so it's drawn digitally in pencil, and then I opened it up the file in Photoshop, converted it to duotone, uh, non-repro blue lines, which was 12% uh, cyan, 0% yellow, black, and magenta, and then. Um, printed this out on the Canson uh, 9x12 Canson um, watercolor artboard. And I'm now inking on the artboard. Yes, that is how it went. I didn't pencil this like on paper and then photocopy it onto the artboard or uh, scan it in and put it on the artboard. Though I have done that for some illustrations in the past. Uh, this one was uh, how I do most of my professional work now. I draw it digitally, then print it out on artboard in blue line and ink it traditionally. Um, just the way I like to work. I am I'm, I am continuing to practice my digital inking skills, but I like having a finished, like, hard copy. I like to have an actual piece of artwork that I can hold uh, at the end of the day, at the end of the project. So like my comic interiors or my covers, I like that there's an actual piece of art when I'm done at the end, instead of a digital file. Um, but there are some projects where I've had to ink it digitally because that's what the client needed. So, uh, so I have done things in that way. Just gonna add a little second coat here. Just kind of beef up the black a little bit. It's interesting how the uh, watercolor paper absorbs the black a little differently than traditional Strathmore Bristol board. Bristol board? Did I say board? Bristol board. Bristol board with a B, um, which is what I usually, which is what I do my comic book illustrations and Copic marker illustrations on. But since I know I'm going to do this one, uh, this color video is going to be watercolor. Watercolor people, I know a lot of people have asked, when are you going to do another watercolor video? It's coming. This Iron Man is going to be colored in watercolor. All right, this spot all my blacks. Check for any little rogue S's, X's. I mean, not S's, X's. Good grief! I can't say a word that starts with B. I'm saying it with a V, and now I'm trying to say the letter X, and I'm saying the letter S instead. It looks like my brain is giving out. I'm talking about trailers, skittles, and uh, subways. So you know it's about time for me to go have a late lunch. But again, always appreciate y'all hanging out with me. It really means a lot. Thanks for all of your participation in the chat. Uh, sorry, I couldn't, again, I'm always sorry I can't address every single question, but I do appreciate y'all hanging out with me and uh, being so gracious. Hope you're having a good day. Hope you're having fun with your art. Hopefully you picked up a trick or two. Yeah, I wanted to add that little part to his, his boot thingy right there. Just beeping up a few lines, just a little bit. Let's go ahead and yeah, we'll just leave that as is. So there we go. So yeah, so thank you for hanging out with me. I, I really appreciate it. Um, hopefully, like I said, hopefully you learned a little something, whether it be inks or, or uh, line weights, foreground, foreshortening, things like that, textures. Hopefully you learned a little something. Hopefully I was able to give a little bit of instruction. Might not be the best teacher, but I like to have fun and hopefully pass something on to y'all as best as possible. But I do appreciate your support. If you're watching this either on YouTube or Instagram, any like or comment or thumbs up that you can give, greatly appreciated. 
If you haven't subscribed or followed me yet, please feel free to do so, so you don't miss out on future art videos, live streams, or posts. And um, yeah, feel free to share my, my videos with, with your family and friends who might dig uh, what I do or the characters that I draw or the techniques that I use. Uh, yeah, feel free. That's a great way to support artists. Just just click click the share button if you're watching here on, on um, YouTube, or I think IGTV allows you to share. Share it to your story on your Instagram page so that uh, the people who follow you can maybe might be interested in checking it out. So doing things like that can really help us artists out if you can't, uh, you know, support us in other ways. Uh, doing that goes a long way. Uh, it, it helps us out. So yeah, hopefully you had fun. Uh, yeah, always great to hang out with y'all. I look forward to hanging out with y'all again real soon. Hopefully at, at, at the latest next week when we do the watercolor video for Iron Man Silver Centurion. So until then, I'm Todd Knock. Keep on drawing. Keep having fun. Take care, everybody. Where's the button? <laughs> see you, see you, everybody.